And what I'm trying to help people understand is this. This is the root of our problem right there. Not having anything that's backed by gold. Our paper currency, this is the asset class of gold that's in Fort Knox. If Fort Knox held any gold, you and I both don't know that. It hasn't been audited for over 60 years. It is the most well-fortified building and structure in our entire United States, even more so than the White House or the Statue of Liberty. Why? Because it holds our value and our value of our dollar and our purchasing power in for all the other countries of the world. The problem is, we don't know if there's gold there. In fact, Germany asked to repatriate their gold this year. 1,537 tons. And the U.S. said no. They can't have the gold back. And they agreed upon 300 tons over the next seven years. What does that tell you? When nations of the world are trading amongst themselves these 400 ounce bars of currency grade gold, because that is the only asset class that can pay off debt from one nation to another, is that that's the only thing that they accept. They don't accept fiat currency, not gold coins, not silver, not jewelry, but 400 ounce bars that are currency grade gold. That's what's in Fort Knox. That's what's in those cards that you're passing around, that grade of gold. So what we have here is something that is God's money, finite in its material. We have to mine it. It has true value. It has always held value for 5,000 years. And the last 1,000 years, there's been 700, 750 fiat currencies throughout the world. 550 plus of them have failed. 100% failure rate. Why do we think we're any different with our U.S. dollars when they're printing it like they're printing it? Because in the past, 1928, this is a gold certificate. When a $20 bill was printed only if there was gold backing it. To print it. So you guys remember this? You see these way back when? Okay? They're gone today. You can't find me. These are collect these are nice things to have. Collectors items. Okay? Because they don't they're not like that anymore. <coughs> In the last few years, we've had $4 trillion printed from our treasuries to quantitative ease on top of 200 plus more trillion in paper derivatives on top of it. We are sitting on hundreds of trillions of dollars of debt that will never be repaid. But we've got a challenge right now because other countries of the world are not accepting our US dollar like they used to. Okay, the bear and the dragon, China and Russia, they we got them all at once, that's good. No problem, man. It's, we're all just hanging out here. But China and Russia are now trading amongst themselves. Other nations are trading amongst themselves. They've cut their, the cord from the U.S. dollar. We had people that went to Canada a few weeks ago, filled up their rental car, went into the convenience store of that gas station, bought a couple snacks, and put a $100 bill down to pay for the gasoline and the snacks. And the merchant says, nope, we don't accept that here. You have a credit card. In Canada. Mexico. A couple other people were down in Mexico on vacation. Trying to trade in their U.S. dollars. Wouldn't, weren't accepted at the banks in Mexico. Our U.S. dollars not been accepted in a lot of places anymore. And it's because they don't have trust in the value of it. And it happens every day all around the world. Fiat currencies are revaluing all the time. And we'll give you some information on that. What we're trying to help you understand, though, is if, if you have a lot of assets and you hold them in paper fiat currency, whatever happens to the value of that fiat currency happens to what you have held in that fiat currency. So if you have a $100,000 bank account, let's say, and they revalued our purchasing power down, you got $50,000 worth of purchasing power. Would that change your life? happens every day. It just hasn't happened here in that form. How do they do it to us now? They tax us and have inflation come into play. So what, if you look at the price of gasoline, it continues to go up, right? And we kind of accept it over time. Inflation. Oh yeah, but my pack of Oreos from, from the grocery store is still $2.99 like it's always been. Yeah, but look at the quantity that's in the package. It's a shrunk package. You see your gallons of ice cream kind of shrink down? There's two ways to do it. Either raise the price or lower the quantity. But either way, you're losing on 